So, so thank you. Um, today I'll be talking with Dr. Justin Goldstein, who is a professor at Penn State and a five-time TEDx talker. So why don't you, let's get right into it. Why don't you explain to me, how did you get involved with Web Ep3? So, yeah, so I was teaching at the, uh, first off, thanks for having me, how rude of me. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was teaching an executive MBA program at the Jack Welch Management Institute. And uh, one of the, uh, one of the students, he was a director at uh, John Deere, if I, if I recall correctly, he uh, asked me a question. He said, Dr. Golston, I read an article where, where they're saying blockchain is going to disrupt the supply chain industry, you mm -hmm. know, and back, you know, back in, back in those days, you know, I just, you know, knew about Bitcoin and things like that because we were in, I was in a crypto space, but then I started going down the now six year rabbit hole <laughs> of blockchain, you know? So, you know, my research at blockchain led to led to me reaching out to uh, Cornell. So at the time, I think Cornell was the only was the second university in the U.S. to offer a blockchain. And, um, you know, they said, you know, we're working on developing, you know, developing out this blockchain program, you know. So, you know, we made some contributions, you know, and then that research kind of led to led to those five TED Talks on blockchain, you know, and. You know, back then, back then, when I was doing my research, there's only like 12 TED Talks on blockchain, period. 12 TED, TEDx Talks or TED Talks on blockchain, period. You know, now every fourth or fifth one's talking about Web3 and blockchain, you know? So, so you know, we've came, we've, came, we've come a long way, but, you know, we're still early. Okay. And is Web3 just blockchain and cryptocurrency, or is it there's some other stuff like AI and, and et cetera? Mm -hmm. Yep. So whenever I define Web3, you know, I always say my my definition, everybody's going to have a different definition, but my definition is it's the it's the collision course, shout out to Lincoln Park, of, <laughs> of oh, and Jay-Z, of, of blockchain, artificial intelligence, the Internet of Things, and then other people can it can include AR and VR. Um, I think that they were, I mean, not only are we still, you know, away, you know, years away from, from wide adoption of blockchain, um, we're, I think we're either even further away from the integration of AR and VR into the metaverse. That's just my thoughts, you know, based on what I see in the space. Um, so it's the convergence of a number of things. Um, I think that you're going to see in, in further out past, past the, uh, Past the AR and VR milestone, I think you're going to see, you know, the inclusion of quantum computing and, and things like that. Okay. Now, in what way will AI aid in changing the world? So, AI in 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 the, in the coming years, AI is going to is going to be included in pretty much everything we do. In my opinion, um, AI is AI and machine learning are are impacting our lives now. In many cases, we just don't know it. In many cases, you're using the. I would say every single viewer is interacting with AI every single day. If you're on social media, you're interacting. With, you're interacting with AI or machine learning in some shape or form. So, so it's either it's going to it's. AI is going to have an even larger impact on Web3. Um, if you're, if you or your viewers are familiar with Alter State Machine, um, they're developing what they refer to as non-fungible intelligence, where they have NFTs, mm -hmm. and you're able to take these AI brains and put that brain into into your into your NFT. So they have um, they have this one project called Fluffs Fluff World, and they're also partnering with they're partnering with the Board Ape Yacht Club. Uh, among another, uh, among other um, NFT NFT projects. So now, what they're trying to do is with their with their use cases, they're going to create you know crypto bots. They're going to have you know um, non player characters. You're going to have metaverse you know uh, metaverse helpers, for the lack of a better term, metaverse assistants, if you will, um, mm -hmm. because you're going to be training that NFT. You're going to be training that brain. Right, right. To interact in the metaverse. So, one project we're working on now is called SIDTech, SIDTech DAO. So we're actually building a university in the metaverse. We're I actually. Like to... Go Sorry. ahead. 
Yeah, I was just I was just on on taking a look at a few videos on Sid Tech and it's really helping expand my knowledge because no one's really no one's really well grounded in blockchain technology. So that's kind of helping helping me out a little bit as I further my education. Yeah. So yeah. So if you go to if you go to Sid Tech Dow, if you go to Sid Tech Dow on on YouTube, uh, we provide a number of videos. We actually so we actually uh, work with Polkadot to to host a number of uh, workshops on on the on the protocol and our last two events we actually we actually um live streamed in the metaverse so we actually held the last two polka dot workshops in the metaverse now correct me if i'm wrong i thought i thought polka dot was like a ponzi scheme mm -mm. polka dot so to give you some history dr gavin wood was mm -hmm. the was the is is one of the co-founders of ethereum Gavin Wood led the developments of Ethereum in the early days. So, so Gavin Wood had this vision of interoperability in blockchain, mm -hmm. and he went off to 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 found uh, Parity, as well as the Web Three Foundation, where where Polkadot was born out of that. So, so just similar to Polkadot. So, Polka, you have Polkadot, which is a layer zero, and you have Cosmos as layer zero. Some people will say Avalanche is a layer zero. There's you can leave that up to I'll leave that up to 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 discussion in the in the comments. <clears throat> but mm -hmm. but you know, Polkadot is a layer zero, which means that they have a relay chain, and every single project that gets added to that relay chain is a layer one, right? Okay. Now you can also you have these layer ones. So let's just use Akala. Akala is one is one of those projects. So now Akala. Is a layer one, so then other projects can build up on top of Akala, as a layer two. So similar to Optimism, you know, within the Ethereum network. So so Polkadot is creating this true interoperability. They're they're creating this they're creating this cross this this cross communication where you can actually communicate with other blockchains. So with Bitcoin, with Ethereum, and and things like that. So so Polkadot Polkadot it has the vision. I know I know I know a lot of people talk a lot of a lot of junk about Cardano but I would say that Polkadot and Cardano have more of a strategic vision they don't mm -hmm. want to just build something and generate you know get 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 those in, get the investors in there and, and collect money no they have the long-term vision of of blockchain and, and how and how and how we view it from a from an institutional from an enterprise perspective you know, I think that you're going to see a lot, in my opinion, this is just my thoughts. Mm -hmm. You're going to see a lot of organizations, large organizations working on Polkadot just because of the interoperability. Now, you're going to see organizations working on, on other blockchains as well. But because of the interoperability of Polkadot, you're going to see that. Now, you you also you also have this, you know, you know, you have bridges and things like that, but that's just, that's just built for, that's just built for, for, you know, bridging cryptocurrencies and things like that. But in terms of cross-chain communication, what blockchain, what the true vision of blockchain was, I think that Polkadot, Polkadot is, is actually building that out now. So, okay. you know, all blockchains aren't, 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 aren't created equal. And, you know, I think that, you know, Polkadot and, and, and Cosmos are kind of in the league of their own. Thank you. Thank you for explaining that. Now, I understand you're involved with a few projects like um, decentralized finance and decentralized exchange. Can you explain what the difference between those two are? So, so decentralized, decentralized finance, decentralized, let me back up. So I would say that decentralized finance is the practice. And I would say that decentralized exchange, decentralized exchanges are the tools <laughs> to participate in the DeFi practice. So, so we actually, we actually wrote, so one of my peers and I from India, we actually wrote the very first academic uh, peer reviewed journal article on hybrid finance. So hybrid finance is going to be the inclusion of, of, of centralized finance like banks and decentralized finance, like we see in the crypto space. So, so Whenever you're developing solutions like that, that is what's going to bring in these enterprises and organizations, because similar to what we've seen, what we've seen in the past with, you know, 
with Blockbuster, what we've seen in the past, you know, with these other with these other internet internet organizations. If these banks are going to are going to try to fight Web three, if they're going to try to fight DeFi, in my opinion, some of these smaller banks they're going they're going to go bank they're going to fail because where else can you get where else can you get where else can you get you know five percent on stablecoin? The banks can't compete with that, but they're safe for now because it's going to take years for this, for that, for that wide adoption. And that's the key. That's the key for anyone. If you, whoever, and this can be anybody. And that's why I love web three, right? You don't have to have a, have a college degree. You don't have to have money. If you can provide value, let's go. Let go. <laughs> right. That's but right. Once, once whoever can create, the own ramp for the masses, that's going to be the winner. And that's one thing that I tell a lot of people in that just create the tooling, create the tooling for different protocols. So, because we've, we're, we're starting to see it now, if you go on coin market cap, you'll see that you'll see that number that you'll see the number of the number of to the number of cryptocurrencies, a number is dwindling by the day, number of exchanges going down by the day. So, so a number of these organizations, they're not going to survive, not going to survive this bear market. But if you create the tooling for multiple platforms, you're going to, you're going to, you're going you're to have sustainability within this web three space, because it's going to come back. It's going to come back, but nobody knows how long this winter is going to be. <laughs> it always does. It always does. And I have a philosophy, like if you can't beat them, join them. So that's exactly what the bank's going to do. Right off the rip, or later on yep. down the road, and we see, we, but we're seeing that with NFTs. We mm -hmm. see, we see Budweiser. We're seeing Budweiser coming into the NFT game. You see, you see Pepsi, the Pepsi mic drop coming into the NFT game. Uh, 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 Tiffany's, I think they raised like twelve million or something like that in twenty minutes. Something crazy, but no, I, I forgot. It was, it was in the millions. It might have been over a hundred million. I don't know, but they raised that. They raised, they raised millions put it that way they raised millions in 20 minutes to take crypto punks and create a physical pendant you know mm -hmm. so you're going to see you're going to see a lot of this a lot of this digital <laughs> conversion with these with these organizations so if you're if you're um if you look back with with adidas you know they partnered up with g money uh um uh punks and um and the board apes so if you got that nft you burnt the first nft and you're able to get physical, you know, phys a physical uh, jumpsuit, right? Right. Now, once you burn, once you burn that NFT, then you placed your order for that jumpsuit, but then they gave you another NFT for the next phase, but you don't know what it is, right? Mm -hmm. Then they airdropped us another NFT, right? So, so organizations, organizations are are getting into this space you know you're seeing you're seeing h&m building building in the in the um in the in the central land you're seeing a bunch of organizations developing headquarters in, in a lot of these in a lot of these uh metaverses and things like that so in speaking with the in, in speaking with the web two organizations they're trying to figure it out they're trying to figure it out and there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that a lot of people don't know about and they just play stupid too. They just they act like yeah. and they talk down about it yeah. until they actually get into it. They do. So like last last year, last year at um at uh at Ape Fest, you know, you had you had organizations such as Sony. Don't know how they got in there, but you know, they had you have you had people such as Sony asking questions, you know, to, to ape holders and things like that. So, you know, money talks, money talks and I mean, you've seen you've seen where where the Board Ape Yacht Club is is working with A16Z. You know, so I have no problem with it, but other people, other people say say are saying that you know the the projects such as Board Apes are selling out. I don't agree. I don't I don't agree with that. But you know, you're going to have you're going to have you know differing opinions in this Web three space and this decentralized and this decentralized space. And going back to that, you know, there have been there's been some people that that have blackballed me because mm. I say we need regulation. Yeah. We need regulation because it's getting too crazy out here. Exactly. You and know? people, yeah, people are gonna are finding loopholes and and getting getting out of hand and doing things that are just mind-boggling. But yeah, we yeah. got got a little away from financial banking. I'm I'm a little bit concerned about people in third world countries 
and how, how can we educate them about decentralized banking and trading? That's one of the re that's one of the reasons why we started Citec. We want to democratize education. And I have I'm close with I'm close with professors from from MIT, my other business partner. He went he went to grad school at MIT. So, you know, he has connections with MIT. Um, I'm actually I'm actually working with University of Southern California on developing a master's pro, uh, developing a course in a master's program. So, you know, I've been speaking with a number of professors from, you know, those schools from Ivy's. And I said, look. I said, yeah, I said, yes, you might make, you know, low six figures teaching. Yes, you're, you're world renowned. Right. I said, but you can take that same exact content you teach at Princeton, you teach at Harvard, right? And you can come into the metaverse. You can teach to thousands of people in third world countries. And you can make three times, five times what you make within higher education at that, at that, the top university, one of some of the top universities in the world, mm -hmm. you know? So, so, so the metaverse and Web3 is going to provide these these people in these countries with the education that they would they would never ever 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 be able to receive. Now, another thing is they have the tools are out there. You know, YouTube, YouTube, in my opinion, especially in the Web3 space, you know, YouTube is the is the is the greatest tool right now because you know, me being an educator, if I want to, if I want to write a journal, a, a peer-reviewed academic journal article in the A journal, it takes a year. It takes a year to get reviewed. It takes it takes time to do edits. It takes time to to get feedback. So that a call that a, that hybrid finance uh, article, they a call made the announcement last. A call made the announcement last June, something like that, right? Mm -hmm. We wrote the article in July. It only got published in March. Close to a year, took a year to get one article published. So if you do that in the Web3 space, in the blockchain space, as quickly as it moves, by the time that article comes out, it's obsolete. It's old. Yeah, you know? I was just thinking that. And within, within the... Um, Within the uh, Web three space, you know, within the higher education space, we do have we do have some journals that are that we refer to as open access. They don't have the paywalls where you know the university libraries have to pay all these subscription fees and things like that. You know, you provide you're providing this knowledge to everybody, right? So that's mm -hmm. aligned with Web three, right? And decentralization and de democratization. So, our, we also we also wrote we also wrote the uh, first academic journal article on the metaverse. So you can find that on my link on my LinkedIn page. It took me a year to write it because everything was changing by the time I was getting close to being done, right? <laughs> yeah. But because it was open access, it didn't take a year like these other, you know, open these other, you know, traditional journals. So you're seeing some, you're seeing some of the younger, some of the younger researchers, some of the younger professors are primarily looking to publish in open access because they're providing that knowledge to everybody, especially within Web3. Because it takes to, it takes so long to get something, you know, get something published. So does SIDTEC help with real-time learning? And does it, does it um, how do I say, keep people from getting confused, like what they learned like two weeks ago and from changing from it being now? Does what do you mean sense? by that? Like, so like it's, it's progressively Mooney. We're learning in real time, right? Mm -hmm. So like say if SIDTEC put a video out like two months or two, six months ago, for an example, and then something changed. How do we keep how do we keep in real time from learning? Oh, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. You have to you have to continue to it's like the blockchain space, the web three space. It's almost like social media. It's almost like it's almost like a YouTube channel, like Bankless. You know, Bankless is going on, you know, five days a week in some cases, right? Because they have to keep up, they have to keep up with, with the market, you know, Bitboy crypto. There's also there's also an interview on Bitboy Crypto on our on the YouTube on the Citec page. Shout out shout out to Bitboy, but mm -hmm. you have to you have to have that mindset so that everyone is is staying abreast staying abreast with all the news. You know, I always tell people I got a PhD, but I'm learning every single day. You have to learn every single day. You can't you can't you can't step away for two days, right? So that current education is going to be something that is even with artificial intelligence you know you're going to have to keep abreast with it and that's something that the only way to give the people what they need is to democratize it 
and make it available for everybody. Everybody learns for free. And we're actually, we're introducing a learn, a learn and earn model. Mm -hmm. We're paying you to learn. Like kind of right? like what Coinbase does. Exactly. So like what Coinbase, Binance, what all these people do to, 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 for airdrops, for, for, to get approval, you know, to, 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 to trade certain, certain things and, and things like that. Yeah. It's a learn and earn model. I mean, it's out there. It's nothing different, but it's kind of like, it's almost like in real time at scale. Now, like can, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, can grade students learn this? Grade school students learn how to blockchain and like get an early jump by the time they get to college? They'll be like, all right, I'm ready to go. Let's do this. I have like my, my seeds planted. It's time to spread my roots, spread my flowers, so on. Yeah. So, so Georgia, Georgia and the United States, state of Georgia and the United States, they actually passed a bill where they're introducing financial literacy and they're, they're teaching, they're teaching, they're teaching, um, you know, grades, I think high school, they're teaching high school students um, about, about crypto and Bitcoin and things like that. So, so you're starting to see some states that are adopting it, but with, um, with, with another, another partnership we have with TCG world. So the TCG world is on, is on Binance smart chain. And whenever we did a partnership, um, the, the CEO, he said, I know you're focused on, on higher education he said but i, I want to make it inclusive to, to elementary school and middle schools as well so within tcg world we're going to have we're going to have elementary middle school high school college within the tcg world right mm -hmm. so so yeah if you go to tcg.world and you go to the map you'll see how large the the the, the university the university plot is but you have to do it but the most important thing is when you talk about the metaverse, these high schoolers are going to be teaching us. Mm -hmm. Think about it. They've been playing in Roblox and Minecraft for fun for years. Most of them, that's all I, that's all I know. Right? They don't play games. They play Minecraft and Roblox. Right? So, so the main, one of the main people in the Sit Tech project, he's a um, command geek. Shout out to command geek. He's got something like 300,000 followers on YouTube. All he does is build in Minecraft, right? Right. And my business partner, my once I told my business partner, he said, Justin, he said, so you're telling me <laughs> you're going to have a 17-year-old teaching 35-year-old executives about how to build a metaverse. I said, developers, I said, developers that are talking about this stuff can't touch these kids in building. They can't come close right so you know these kids that kid that kid that kid because he's he's a 18 year old in, in switzerland i think he graduated i think he graduated um this past semester he probably has so many projects during the bull run in the metaverse i said he's probably going to show up show up show up to his freshman year in college in lambo <laughs> that's you know? true so, there's kids out there that know how to work an iphone better than their own parents yeah I mean, you, you have you have these young kids, you have these young kids writing scripts in Roblox. Mm. It's My, nuts. Yeah. You know, and uh, so we also we also have another. Um, we have another project that we partnered with called Black Unicorns down in Florida, where, where that's where I'm from. Actually, that's where part? I'm at right now. Poor what Charlotte. Part? OK, got you. Got you. Yeah. So she's down in uh, uh, she's down in Tampa and. Um, so she's been she's been educating high school students on on artificial intelligence for years, mm -hmm. you know. So she's going to bring in that knowledge into into you know the metaverse and educating you know middle school and high school students on 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 um, artificial intelligence. But one thing that we're trying to get some research on is how young can these can these kids can these students I should say these students begin to use these these headsets. You know these VR headsets, you know. So, because like I think that there's there was one study that came out, you know, years ago where you know it might it might uh, have an impact on you know development and things like that. So we're waiting we're waiting to get to get some more definitive research to uh, to see when we can actually introduce um, AR and headsets and things like that to middle school and high school students, elementary school students. All right. So we're coming to an end now. Do you have? First of all, thank you for spending time. I know you're busy. Any last words that you want to share before we close? 
The biggest thing for the audience is, is that every single role in the Web 2 space, in the IRL space, is going to come to Web 3. It's going to come to the metaverse, right? Now, with NFTs, again, I participate in the NFTs and things like that, but we have yet to see the true use case for NFTs. I think NFTs are going to disrupt the, the legal sector. I think it's going to disrupt the real estate, the real estate industry. I think it's going to disrupt supply, a supply chain. I think it's going to dis disrupt the medical industry, you know? So whatever you're doing within the web two space in your day job, you know, see how that can be transferable within, within the web three space. You know, I think that now more than ever, people see, people see the importance of marketing, you know, people see the importance of social media. I didn't touch, I didn't touch Twitter until, until I started messing with, messing in crypto last year. I don't like social media. Right. Mm -hmm. But without social media, without marketing, the project won't survive in my opinion, you know, and big fan of Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone said, I'm no, I'm not, I'm not, he said, I am, I am nowhere close to the best real estate developer or the best, the rest, best real estate guy. He said, but I'm the best marketer. Right. Right. So, so that's one of the biggest things that I've learned in this space is that, you know, marketing is going to be very important. Um, and also, you know, the transparency is going to be important in the web three space and community is going to be very important. Now, now, the only way that the decentralized metaverse is going to sustain is if we do it together. Because fate, Meta, Meta's coming out with some good stuff. I'm not, I'm not a fan of centralization, but their metaverse and their and their and the things that they're doing, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Now the metaverse is a little bit, a little bit uh the people in the metaverse are a little bit vulgar. And I'm not, I'm not a fan of that, but. That's where that's where the Web three space, that's where the blockchain space is going to mitigate that risk, because these protocols are introducing introducing slashing. So if you do any kind of nefarious acts, if you have any you know any you know discriminatory comments or something in in, in the metaverse, somebody can bring that to the council, they can vote on it, and then that person that person can actually get their token slashed. They can get their tokens taken away. You know, so I'm a, I'm a fan of that. Some people say, well, that's centralization. Well, if you don't have if you don't have some some, you know, things in place, it's going to be it's going to be the Wild West like we have now. And you see how that's working out for us. Right. You need to have you need to have law and order. You need to have yep. governance. Yep. And that's even, the if, if, even if it's decentralized governance, you need to have some kind of governance structure. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's a good way to keep society rolling. Well, mm -hmm. listen, man, I appreciate you. And I wish you the best with your endeavors. Good luck this weekend and have a great, I hope to see you in the future. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks, man. Take it easy. Yeah. See you.